Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to the final preview for this pre-season campaign. It's been a long, arduous, uh, closed season for the Reds. Nine uh, friendlies in total after this one against Torino. It's been a very successful pre-season campaign. We've seen lots of promising football, particularly in the last three games where we've defeated uh, Man City, Man United and Napoli. The last two being very convincing, um, particularly the game against Napoli on Saturday in Dublin, which I really should have gone to. I really am regretting not going to that. It looked like a lot of fun uh, and on the pitch was a lot of fun as well. It was great to watch uh, from my armchair. So... Yeah, I can only imagine how much fun it would have been watching it from the stands. Looked like there were some great nights with the Anfield Rap and Redmen TV there as well. So, never mind. Next year, I'm going to make sure to not miss any of these occasions. And anywhere, any time you get the chance to travel and watch the Reds. As I said in my blog about the New York City trip, which I went uh, on a couple of weeks ago, you've got to do it. It's just so much fun mixing with all these Reds. Um, but anyway, let's get on to the matter of hand. It is the final preseason game, as I say, and it's against another Italian opposition this time. Uh, a, a lesser opposition, you'd think, than, than Napoli. Uh, but, you know, with a game against West Ham looming on Sunday, obviously I doubt Jürgen Klopp is going to want to risk many first-team players, particularly not um, for any longer than sort of 45 minutes, maybe 60 a push. But anyone that's starting against West Ham, I doubt we'll get any longer than a half here. Um, but we, we might learn a little bit. Um, we might see some academy graduates. Uh, obviously, the midfield options are kind of not in abundance with a couple of injuries and players coming back, um, only just coming back now. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Dan Lovren is back, but apparently he's not going to play. So we shall see Henderson back in training. Will he get a game here? Maybe he, he'll get 45 minutes or so, but I'd be very surprised if he featured against West Ham. So from top to bottom, lineup wise, I think for this game, Allison, of course. Um, and he will obviously be our number one this season, so that is all done and dusted. Then you get to right back and you've already got a dilemma there. Do you play Trent? Do you play Klein? I think Trent might play maybe an hour or so here just to get his match fitness up, at least 45 minutes, but Nathaniel Klein seems like the favourite to take that starting berth in that first Premier League game. Centre-backs, we are stuck with Gomez and Van Dijk. Obviously, it could be a lot worse than that. It's a great opportunity for Joe Gomez to prove himself. Um, uh, you know, in, in this game and in the one against West Ham. Now, whether we'll see uh, Nat Phillips give, it, give it another go here, or maybe even Connor Masterson, um, I think we probably might even see both of those guys against Torino. But yeah, Van Dijk and Gomez will be the two. So maybe they'll play together for a half to get used to each other again um, at Anfield. And then, you know, left back, you've got Robertson, who will start against West Ham. But I'm, I'm sure he will um, switch with Moreno for half each against Torino. Midfield, so Lallana's got an injury, which... You know, I'd have had him down as a certainly a contender to start against West Ham. So you'd imagine James Milner's a guaranteed starter now. It's just about um, well, you'd ex will, will Fabinho get the get the nod? He didn't play against Napoli, so you'd expect he will start here. Will he start against West Ham? That one is very very touch and go for me. Genie Vinaldum obviously played. Uh, but he has missed quite a lot of pre-season, so is he, has he got it in him to start when Fabinho's had a whole pre-season, but you know, is he up to the pace yet? I, I think he's done pretty well, I've, I've enjoyed his performances, so I'm, I'm going to say he will start against West Ham, um, so let's give him 45 minutes here uh, with Naby Keita. Uh, and James Milner. That seems like the midfield three. I think we'll see plenty of Curtis Jones here as well. Um, get him playing in front of that Anfield crowd, something I think he'll probably do maybe a dozen times this season in all competitions. He's got plenty of chances in the domestic cups. Um, and yeah, who knows what this season holds for him. It looks like he's not going to go anywhere, which is um, which is positive. I, I, I want to see this guy develop uh, at Anfield in and around the first team squad. As Klopp said in his interview today, he likes the young players, but he doesn't want to have to use them in tough situations. That's usually when you do have to use them, when you've got injuries and you're having to thrust someone like Curtis Jones into that midfield because of injuries. I mean, we got to the point last season around the Champions League final where we were literally on our last legs with Oxlade Chamberlain being out. Um, so many other issues in midfield. Obviously, we didn't have Naby Keita or Fabinho at that point, so we were quite light. Um, imagine if we had to thrust Curtis Jones in that sort of situation. So we have got... We have got options, but the injuries are already a concern with Oxlade Chamberlain being out for the season, obviously, and Alana having a knock, Henderson not quite being ready yet. Um, so yeah, the midfield is going to be there's going to be a lot of rotation in midfield this season. Shakiri might even play a bit as that number eight or number ten. So that will be very interesting. And then the front three, um, the only real debate is whether Sturridge or Firmino start. Obviously, Firmino's only just. Uh, come back into action, looked very sharp against Napoli. Um, Mane and Salah obviously have looked great uh, over the past couple of weeks. 
uh, and Daniel Sturridge is you know scoring with regularity again. So I mean, I'd, I would have no qualms watching him start against West Ham. I think he's very, very fit and very sharp at the moment. He's scoring goals. Looks confident. Looks happy. Looks determined. Obviously. Um, he wants that next contract. Can he secure one more big contract? You know, you'd imagine that's when you're going to get the best out of a player when he's got that on the horizon. Doesn't want to be leaving and you know taking a downward step. He wants to be proving himself at one of the biggest clubs in the world in Liverpool. Um, and yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to see. I'm, I'm sure Matt Solanke might get a game or, or, or whatever here. I, I doubt Origi will. They won't won't want to risk anyone that um, is likely to leave. Uh, you know, they won't don't want to risk any injuries. Danny Ings the same. Maybe Grujic, although you know the move to Cardiff seems to be falling through, so I'm not sure what the plan is with him. Obviously, with these midfield injuries, maybe he might stick around. Uh, there's obviously issues over his contract, so I don't really know about Grujic. I'm not too bothered because I don't, just don't really rate him that high. I'm sure some of you might disagree. Leave a comment with your thoughts on the Serb. But yeah, we are going into this game in decent shape, bar the injury concerns. Obviously, form um, is is very much there. We are certainly um, going into the season with a lot of momentum, and you know. How much do you read into pre-season? Well, you don't read into it too much, but you know we're winning games rather than losing games, and it's it's a very simplistic thing to say, but of course it matters psychologically. I, I remember 2011 when we lost three 0 to Championship team Hull in pre-season, and you know of course that didn't have too much of an impact on how the season actually panned out, but like we we finished low in the in the Premier League. Yes, we won we we won the League Cup, but it just doesn't set a good precedent. Um, and even the twenty fourteen fifteen season losing to Man United that just sticks out in the mind. It doesn't matter. I know it doesn't matter, but um, it can be a bad thing, especially when you've got new signings, big new signings bedding in that that winning mentality is instilled as early as possible. Uh, players like Sturridge are scoring goals hugely important players like Curtis Jones are actually showing that they belong here which is hugely important I mean if he ever is called upon in the Premier League in October for a game he knows that he's impressed the fans and the fans aren't going to be anxious to see him because you know he's played some wonderful stuff in over the last few weeks so I do think there is a level of uh, correlation between how pre-season goes and how the season goes it's obviously very limited because these games literally do not matter and especially playing against teams like uh, these Serie A sides who have got a week extra uh, before their season starts so they're obviously going to be a bit behind so I expect us to give Torino a bit of a beating here to be honest I wouldn't be surprised if it's a, a, another sort of four or five goals for the Reds um, as Torino are welcomed uh, an expectant buoyant Anfield crowd it's going to be a really nice atmosphere I won't be there unfortunately because you know you've only got so many holiday days at work and you have to travel to Liverpool um, but yeah local fans have got a good opportunity to go and see the Reds some young fans are going to be in the crowd it should be a good atmosphere and a great way to send us off into the campaign and then it's serious serious business um, which takes me into this local fans debate which I, I don't know where it started on, on Twitter today um, I've seen one guy who has now had his account deactivated who was complaining about um, foreigners and walls or, or you know people from outside of the area taking his tickets and now he can't get them um, local fans have kind of been um, some of them of course have been accusing um, out of towners of kind of making up uh, these um, arguments to try and get attention or follows um, some non-local fans have been getting really defensive and explaining, you know, justifying why they support Liverpool. Um, most of the sensible people, on, on whether they're local or non-local, are kind of just, as I say, common sense prevailing. L Liverpool fans in Liverpool know that, you know, people that are outside of the city are just as legitimate Liverpool fans uh, as they are. Now, some of them might not go to many games, some of them might not quite get the city or the people uh, or the culture around Liverpool as, as they would, and that is completely fair. Um, and I think as long as those out-of-towners acknowledge that um, and are respectful of Liverpool as a city and, and the people, um, then there's no reason why everyone can't get on fine. I mean, obviously, my opinion is quite predictable because I'm not from Liverpool, um, but I do go to the majority of games. I do engage with the city uh, beyond football. I think that's very important because it's one of those cities where you know, it's not just a football team plonked in a, in, in a part of the world. There's, there's so much that goes around it. There's, it's such a unique and wonderful city in so many ways. And football is kind of the centre of that. So is music, so is art, so is, 
you know, I mean, the nightlife, like restaurants, the, the, everything about the city, it's all very tight knit. Um, the politics as well, like, I mean, you know, I, I could not agree more with, with the, the views of, of, of most uh, Liverpudlians, um, you know, whether that be socialism, just left wing politics, their views on Brexit, you know, everything since, since Thatcher, you know, I think you kind of have to, you have to be a certain type of person to not qualify, but to, to to really be a true Liverpool supporter, you have to be engaged with that side of it as well. Um, that's my opinion. I don't think you can be. Um, well, look, this is just my opinion. I, I think it's strange if you have right wing views and you're a Liverpool fan just because of ha what the what that side of it means to the city um, is very important. So you have to, if, even if you don't agree with it, you have to at least engage with it and not ignore it, you know, the stuff that happened in the 80s, not just Hillsborough, but, um, you know, the way that the way that the city was completely neglected and um, the way Thatcher just, you know, tried everything she could to to get rid of Liverpool as a, as a force in the country. And then, you know, she, she certainly felt the backlash and the Conservatives have felt the backlash ever since. Um, so, yeah, just be careful if, if, if you're an out of town and just be respectful, you know, just engage with the city, try and go there. And I, I understand the local fans' arguments about, um, fans that go and take their selfie sticks and their iPads and whatever, but you know, I mean, look again. I'm, I I make YouTube videos, so again, my opinion might be quite predictable. But I just wouldn't worry about it. I would not worry about it. I would not worry if there is um, a person from Estonia that's there with their girlfriend for the first time ever at Anfield, and they just they've got their iPads there. Who cares? Who cares? Unless unless they're like actively blocking your view. Um, I know it could have gone to a local fan and whatever, but the the tickets are there. It's, it's not like it's not like there's an allowance for um, people from Asia to get these. There's a thousand tickets for Asians. There's a thousand tickets for Indians. There's a thousand tickets for people from Australia. It's all there's there's fifty four thousand tickets. Yes, there's there's corporates, which we is a separate conversation. Um, only so many go in the local general sale, which is again a separate conversation. Maybe there should be more. It's very important that there's as many locals in the ground as possible to to generate that atmosphere. Like you want people to be thriving um, off of it. But you know, I mean, there are locals in that crowd that are, are moaning old fellas that you know maybe a, a guy from Brighton that's you know 17 years old and just chomping at the bit to sh sh scream and shout with the game would be a better place than the old guy who just can't really be bothered anymore but doesn't really want to give up a season ticket. So, you know, I can see both sides. I can see, I, I, I can see why some local fans get irritated. I really, really can. And people comment on my videos saying you, you should support your local team. Um, you know, you, you wool, whatever, like nice scout accent. Absolutely fine. I'm, I'm happy to take that criticism. I'm happy to um, be slagged off or whatever because you know, it's. I'm not going to change my ways. It's. It's a. For those of you, for those people that do think that you should just support your local team, I mean, that just seems. So, so where you're born, um, dictates how you enjoy your life. I mean, for those for those people like me who football is the biggest hobby that I've got, the the, the thing that I plan my life around. So, if I'm born in Devon, I have to. Well, okay, I was born in Exeter, right? So I have to then support Exeter, and I, I, I'm not going to ever see my team get to the Champions League. I'm not going to ever see them get to the Premier League, most likely. Um, and I have to, I have to go to like places like, you know, no disrespect, places like Stevenage or, um, or or Cheltenham or or wherever it is, rather than you know going to Kiev, Porto, Rome. You know, having a wonderful time traveling the world with my mates, supporting the team that I have happened to fall in love with at a young age, rather than this one that I'm forced forced to support, you know, just because of where I'm, I'm born. And, and also, do you support your local team as in the place you were born or the place where you live? Because I've lived in different cities in my time, so did I, should I now be a West Ham fan because I live there now? Um, if I want to move to Sydney, do I then become a Sydney FC fan? Like, explain, explain how, explain the rules. If, if you're one of these people that is a local team merchant, please explain the rules so that, you know, we know where we stand because it's just... It's very, it's very like border control. It's very Brexit. It's very, it's just very short sighted. And yeah, if if you are a local, if you're from Liverpool, if you were born in Liverpool, um, and you're a Liverpool fan, then you are very, very fortunate. You know, you live in, in my opinion, the best city in the country, and you you just get you have to get a bus or whatever to the game. That is brilliant. And you know, you guys are very lucky. Um, 
but you know people people from London uh, if, if they're making that journey as well and they're spending all their money um, on tickets and getting in the members sales then who, who are you to stop them doing that so it's, it's an interesting debate but one that I feel there's just one clear answer for which is that we're Liverpool fans it's such a cheesy thing we, we, we are Liverpool fans come on let's just not let's not be ridiculous and I know a lot of you that follow this channel are not from Liverpool um, <laughs> most people that are from Liverpool probably hate me and clicked off my channel as soon as they saw me um, and there are Scouse YouTubers that, that make Liverpool content that they probably prefer um, so yeah it is what it is we are where we are but you know what's the point in arguing amongst ourselves what's the point um, if you can't get a ticket then you're not trying hard enough if, 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 if you're a Scouse guy that cannot get a ticket and you're moaning about foreigners getting them, they have got just as good access to them as you have. If, if, they, if they're buying off Touts or if they're buying off Thomas Cook uh, and they're wealthier, then okay, we, we can have a chat about that. But generally, there are, there's a member sale, there's um, later availability sales, you can go on Twitter, um, people do it through connections, through mates and stuff, especially for away games. So it is what it is. Um, let, let me know your thoughts on the whole debate, of course, and let me know your thoughts on the Torino game. Are you going to be going? I'd love to hear from you. Um, subscribe to this channel if you're new, because I'm going to be doing, of course, a review of that game as soon as it finishes, and then we're moving on to West Ham, where I'll be previewing and vlogging that game. So all very exciting stuff. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook too, and I'll see you next time.